Okay, here we are with Eric Claypool, one of the area's most renowned artists when it comes to the barn stars and hex signs and so forth. Eric, you're even dressed appropriately for this festival. Look at that beautiful shirt. Hey, I better put my hat on for this one. <laughs> yeah, right. tell, tell me, this wait, tell right. me a little bit how the hat goes I'll in with the culture. You. Okay, my dad was a man of many hats. So he had this one, a Scottish tam, and I wore it one year and had the best day ever, so I continued to wear this hat. Oh. So it just became my character. You know, I wear his shirts and it just became part of it. It has nothing to do with Pennsylvania Dutch, but it's just uh, the way I dress here. Those shirts look hand embroidered too. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, look at that. Wow. Wow. So this is one of the two original ones. All the rest they wore out, so they cut the designs off and put them on new shirts, and those are wearing out. But That's amazing. It's like 30 years old, something like that. George so, Goodhart used to make them. You're all about folk art. That's right, yes. My studio has a lot of different people's folk art in there. Where is your studio? Uh, Lenhartsville, Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, Easy to find? Yeah. Yeah, well, my driveway is like a half mile long, a little okay. rough, but uh, <laughs> people go up there like, wow, how do you get up here in the wintertime? Okay. <laughs> and when are you open? Uh, usually evenings and weekends when I'm there. Okay. Usually calling hours, you know, if somebody wants to come visit and okay. see the things. Let's take a look at some of these designs for people who are unfamiliar with some of these designs. Let's start over here with the, with the rooster. You can the explain. Rooster? Okay. This is a 16-point star rooster combo. Roosters represent strength. Uh, the little Vesic Episcus is an ancient fertility rune. This one I put on the 16 point star. Roosters represent strength. Rooster, or the 16 point star represents prosperity. So, so you'd put that up to say that you feel prosperous or you want it to be prosperous and you want to have a strong right. relationship with somebody or whatever, there right? You go. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey. And let's move over to the butterfly because the butterfly is interesting. A lot of colors in a butterfly. Uh, the butterfly is a design that comes from the old fractal art. So a lot of these designs, tulips, birds, you know, butterflies, they were put on fractal art, blanket chests, things like that. My dad started putting them on in the late 90s. Butterflies represent a new life, a new beginning. This one combination has a 12-point uh, star burst in the center. The 12-point star was associated with the 12 apostles. The modern version is like good luck every month of the year. Uh, tulips represent faith, hope, and charity, and all your borders represent smooth sailing through life. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. And these are all hand painted all by you, right? Hand painted. I cut out my own discs, white coat them, and draw the design, and freehand every one of them. And, and you use uh, any kind of uh, geometric devices to make such intensely. Uh, you know, they intricate are, patterns. You know, that's funny you say because they're very, very geometric. Yeah. Uh, very interested in designs. This eight point star is one of the common ones you see on a barn. And when you lay it out, the first way I discovered how to lay this one out, let's say if you took this line straight over here, this would be a 45 degree angle. This is a 30 degree angle. It works out with that one. The way that the first way I figured it out was laying this on the straight line wow. here, and it gives you the outside perimeter. The other way, really interesting, the number seven has tied in geometrically to a lot of old barn stars. So if you divide star point to star point, if you divide by seven, this is two sevens. The pinwheel is three sevens and two sevens. You know so, what? Were you a were you a geometric student? And do you like geometry in school? I did you? good in geometry, okay. but I've discovered a lot of these ways. You know, you can make star points as skinny and fat as you want, but the way the Pennsylvania Dutch laid them out, there were specific angles that they used on all their designs. True. Sure. This is like a combination math and art, though. Math you know? and art. Yes. Okay, and take us one last star. Let's go up and see this uh, very interesting, gorgeous blue star again with geometric patterns. It says Claypool 2014, which means you made it. Yes. That's the uh, I'm going to show them a little picture of that now. You go ahead and describe what that is that there. That is a hill star. Milton Hill was a well-known barn star painter in the early 1900s. Milton Hill was actually the first one that put the signs on a disc. He was here commissioned by the original Folk Festival. The second year, he couldn't make the first year. He had too many barns to paint. The second year, they set up a barn facade. He painted every day, he painted a, a hill star on there and then coated it white at the end of the day, the next day started all over again. But that one, my dad named the Hill Star after his designs. His work, you know, when he started painting barn stars as a kid, these old common barn stars, a lot were replaced with a Hill Star. So it was already progressive art 100 years ago. Sort of fancier, right? Fancier, yeah. yes. Uh, so I have repainted many of Milton Hill's barn stars on barns throughout Berks County, the Windsor Castle area, Virginville, Cookstown. Uh, it's a real fancy, pretty star. It's an eight-point star burst. 
eight point stars were associated with marriage and fertility and it just has a fancy fading blue border on the outside and it's just all geometry you know they're all half circles going all around the outside of the barn. I want to talk about the blue a little bit because I follow you on Facebook because if you follow Eric Claypool on Facebook you can see some of the designs he's working in on you can see his uh, Barn Star Ghost project that he's Ghost working on. That's a whole other fun. interesting topic. Yes, but yeah. I, the, the question that came up right before the festival, and I think I even jumped in on that message string, was how in the world do you create these beautiful blue? I mean, these beautiful blue colors. If you look at them, they are absolutely gorgeous. They fade one into the next, into the next, to a lighter blue background. It's simply gorgeous. It's like a hand blender. Just well, the way to do that is you take your dark blue, brilliant blue, and you paint your first color around there. You take that blue and you cut it in half with white, creates this color. You paint that one all the way around. You take that color, you cut it in half with white again, it creates that color, and so forth and oh, so forth. Oh, that's amazing. That's really neat, Eric. Milton Hill really used to mix all his own colors, mix all his own paint, and he also had like three shades of red. He had red, medium red, and a pink in a lot of his Barn Star designs. So cool. Hey, Eric Claypool, thank you very much for almost single-handedly keeping this tra tradition alive in Berks County. It's a fun, very interesting, magical, mystical art. You know? yeah, it you sure is. a lot of fascinating people and very much you know, enjoy doing it. All right, so come and visit Eric Claypool at the Kutztown Folk Festival. Hey, thank you. Enjoy the day and come get some good eats and good food. And <laughs> have a great day here.